right, first question. Is silence before worship essential, or is it appropriate to spend some time in meaningful conversation in the time between main service and evening service? How should we conduct ourselves? What about after service? Wait a minute, you only get one question. I had 90 questions here. Well, the Bible didn't say complete silence. It said, let your words be few, but let them be God-centered words. Oh, yes, I was out mowing the lawn the other day, and somebody wrote, what's that got to do with God? There's time for that six other days. Is it appropriate to spend some time in meaningful conversation in between morning and evening service? Sure. I mean, but talk about the sermon. What did you get out of it? This is one of the things the New England Puritans used to do with their children, is they had to take notes because when they got home around the lunch table, they were going to be asked to recite the three main points of the sermon. There's nothing like accountability, right? Um, we tried to teach our daughter Michelle about Lord's Day observance. And so the whole day was to be given to God-centeredness. So on the Lord's Day, she could watch videos, but they had to be Jesus videos or religious videos. Uh, she could read books, but they had to be her Christian books. Uh, she could play with her friend, but there had to be a religious activity. That day is special, and we need to teach our children that way. How can we individually prepare for a Sunday service, worship on a day where we are serving and cannot partake of the service? What can we do corporately? If any, I assume that means you're serving in some capacity here in the church. You are serving. That is part of religious worship for you. Now, it's not something you'd want to give up every Sunday when you couldn't hear the sermon or ever interact with anything like that, but you are serving Christ and His church by helping out in that way. Nursery service is religious service. Question. There are three of them here. That's a lie. It's questions. Is there any significance with worshiping God on Saturday as opposed to Sunday or the other way around? Well, the Bible talks about it being on the first day of the week. If you're doing it Saturday night so that you don't have to go on Sunday, that's bad. If you have to work Sunday and there's no way around it and there's a Saturday night service, then make Saturday your Sabbath day, the whole day. Is there sin with those who do not worship on either one of those days and worships God on the other? If they don't ever worship God, that's a sin. <clears throat> Corporately. I remember asking Dr. Gerstner one time, I said, Dr. Gerstner, when's my Sabbath? I work every Sunday. He said, yes, so you need to take another day of the week as your Sabbath day. So your pastor needs to get another day where you leave him alone. That was worth the 10 bucks you paid me to say that. <laughs> In the Ten Commandments, it is said to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy and so forth. In the command, I don't seem to see gathered together and worship God. Is this something that just develops over time? Uh, that command is in Hebrews. And it's just as binding as anyone in the Old Testament. But uh, you see, the Old Testament worship was corporate worship. The worship of heaven is going to be corporate worship. And so I think it's not hard to draw the conclusions that that's the way it's to be done. What is the worship of God? It's to declare to Him His perfections, either in song, in Scripture reading, in listening to the sermon, in prayers of confession. But it's to give to the Lord the glory due unto His name. What do you think is the role of worship at non-formal service times? Baby shower, fellowships, those are all optional. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, but that's not the same as corporate worship. Um, MacArthur tells the story about time at his church when the women had a weekend conference and uh, they served each other communion. 
And he read them the riot act. <clears throat> that is for the leadership of the church to do. That is for those who are stewards of the mysteries of God. That is for ordained men. That is not a bunch of women giving each other grape juice and crackers. They took it upon themselves to act as if they were in a formal worship service. Can women worship God by the way? Absolutely. But you don't have the authoritative preaching out of a woman. You don't have anybody administering the sacraments if there's no elder there. So it is different. Uh, a baby shower is not a worship service or a fellowship time or a small... It's, it is a time that can be worshipful, but it is not a worship service. Do you see the difference I'm making there? Worship in spirit and truth. Doesn't it mean spirit to spirit? Our spirit to his spirit? Truth, in other words, God's word? I'm not sure I understand the question, and so I'm not going to say something just to sound like I do know it. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not that smart. I believe you said, which I agree with, well, now we've got a question. <clears throat> as long as you agree with, we're on... Worship is for God, not for you. How does this also relate to the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath? Um, the Sabbath is beneficial to man. On, uh, on the Northampton Press website, um, there's a bunch of free re resources, northamptonpress.org. And one of those is a uh, booklet by Gardner Spring, The Sabbath, a Blessing to Mankind. And he deals with this very question, so I would invite you to go to, uh, to read that. But basically, man was not made for the Sabbath does not mean that these rules are there and man was just created so there would be somebody to obey them. The Sabbath was made for man. It's to his benefit. It's for his spiritual well-being. It's in that sense it was made for man um, and not the other way around. Well, you've been a wonderful group. I've enjoyed your company. Um, now I'm going to go home and take a nap. You people have worn me out. Just trying to stay one step ahead of this well-taught congregation. There's nothing worse than preaching in front of another preacher, particularly one this gifted. So uh, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for staying and listening. Otherwise, I'd have been talking to myself. <clears throat> and I trust to get a good report from your pastor that tomorrow was a wonderful worship service because you strove to give God the honor that was due unto his name. <clears throat>